We enjoy the fruits our society has afforded us. Of that there is no doubt. Eating, watching, consuming and masturbating ourselves to comfort levels our ancestors only dreamed of. But we are not fulfilled as a people, are we? The balance of comfort to discomfort in our lives has never been so tilted towards the former in regards to how much choice and control we have over our comfort levels. Now we know discomfort can be beneficial. Think working out to grow muscle or the mental discomfort of learning a new skill or starting a new job. So, is this materialistically easy mode way of life we all live all it's cracked up to be? Are you and I in need of a hard dose of reality, whatever that may mean? And can this balance of comfort and discomfort be consciously managed? In this episode of the Friday Council, we discuss how living in a comfortable rut can shrink your whole worldview, leaving you vulnerable to life's inevitable curveballs. We discuss self-medicating against discomfort, physical, mental and spiritual, and in the many forms that takes. And seeking discomfort in the online world, where algorithms incessantly tempt us into our intellectual comfort zones of entertainment and mediocrity. And so, without further ado, this is the Friday Council. Welcome back to another episode of the Friday Council podcast. Today is Friday. We are recording on a Friday today. And uh, surprise. If you're watching, as you can see, we've got a special guest here today. Um, his name is Toby. Hello. Say well, you say say hello, Toby. But you've already done it. Um, Toby, I met Toby uh, when I was working at a retail job, and um, post work, I would go to a cafe, and um, Toby was the barista slash server, and um, that's how we met, and haven't remained close, but just like. I'd say like acquaintances, probably the mm. best way to put it. I'd say every time I see you, it's always a good time. Like yeah, I, yeah. I, every there's no like negative to you almost oh. when it when it comes to like oh my god it's Nav. Lovely, and that's good. Toby's to been throwing Nav a few compliments before recording as well. <laughs> there's, there's some favoritism, clear favoritism going on here. Yeah, but we've um we've all kind of reconnected. Life has made us cross paths, mm. and so we thought we'd have Toby on today just to ask some questions but we have a few that are um specific but daniel why don't you lead us into the first question or topic all right topic topics are centered around um kind of comfort uh seeking discomfort living in a nice comfortable little rut kind of in in the two how those two interact very first question kick it straight off um i want to ask i'll direct it to toby first what do you think happens to a person when they're sheltered from discomfort and um, or and or are never compelled to venture beyond their boundaries of comfort and security? What would that do to a person, do you think, or it's yourself? A, it's such a broad question when you kind of put it on paper because when you every different person, I'd say, has a different definition to comfort and their own comfort and what they find comfortable, like... A, I could use examples of myself, but I mean, it all, almost all in all, it's relatively the same to any of you guys here. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think. I, sorry, I don't mean no, to cut you, you off, but um, in terms of the, the like discomfort and then being like being uncomfortable in your comfort, mm. I think kind of makes more sense in my mind. Where you kind of just feel like every single day is like a repeat, and then, but you don't really have the ambition or drive to push yourself out because you're kind of afraid of like the shallow waters almost when you do. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm speaking from the heart because I feel like that's where I've almost just came from. Yeah, I think it's, it's a pretty relatable way. I don't, we can only speak for young men, but. David vigorously, David and I vigorously nodding. You've, you've yeah, that was me last year. To that? Yeah, just put yeah. myself in my. Own, I stayed, made myself a hermit because that's where I'm most comfortable. Where I'm just by myself, alone in my bedroom. But it's not much of a life, so I can completely relate. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, off that question, you'd assume your surface level response would be it's not good. It's not a good thing if someone doesn't seek any discomfort. I personally, I think anyway. Um, 
Do you guys agree? Uh, well, I mean, what like, the... first and foremost, you know, you can kind of choose how you'd want to live life. Some, like, comfortable and the thought of, you know, just having a nine-to-five job, having a dog or whatever, um, and just going through the motions, like, that suits some people. But for me, like, I find if you're just – as much as it's nice for me, like as a person, I I need to have a routine. I still need challenges, even if they're small, switching things up. Otherwise, you just feel a bit, um, yeah, you're just in a rut. I think that's how I'd probably put it. Yeah. Um, but I'll have phases of both where I'm just content in what I'm doing. But I, I like to think, I always, I always actually think, when I'm thinking about this topic, contemplating it, I always think back to when I was at my retail store, Oh, out them farmers. There's there's some. It'll be the same at yours and every retail store. There'll be the forevers, like the forever mm. ladies who've just been there for like fifty years. And uh, to me, in my experience, personal experience, they are the ones that have gotten into some kind of comfortable rut, and it just seems to shrink their worldview to such a tiny extent where some, some tiny little like bitchy little politics within the workplace it consumes their whole life and ruins their whole life because their retail job is is their whole life um so i think yeah you could associate like being in that rut for for literally for 40 years i've I've been and they're not happy they complain about their jobs um and yeah so triggered and affected by these tiny little she said this about me i'm not working at this count at this till anymore Mm. like and then to the managers are just forever sorting it out so i think in my experience i've witnessed it as an all-round negative thing yeah um it just reduces your like chances to learn something new or try something new or open open another door and yeah i think it's always going to be bad would you find working like the the bitchiness and complaining like Lunch times would just turn into full gossip, gossip sessions. Yeah, it was great yeah. to watch from the outside. Yeah, it's great. Like it's, it's entertaining, but yeah. it's also just like, why? Like, why? <laughs> epic lesson. Yeah. Like, epic lesson yeah. to be able to watch that as an impartial third party and be yeah. like, I do not want my life to be like that. You almost, you, know, you almost learn like a few little like tips and tricks sort of from them. Like, mm. they, they've been there for a fair while and they know the secrets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they know, know the ooh. goss, but you don't want that. that workplace goss that ultimately meaningless workplace goss although it is fun to be your whole life do you have any anyone in your your life that you or have experienced workmates or whatever that have that you associate with that rut like just super comfortable life and it's maybe worked out great or does it always seem to work out negatively so not just me oh i don't know because i i've worked with a fair amount of people and you can definitely tell when someone's just done like there's nothing else to put it but like Mm -hmm. they don't show up anymore or they're forever just complain Mm. do nothing do you Uh, think then do you think that's related to to their just sticking with what they know and and being comfortable and and never maybe pushing themselves or is that unrelated i don't know the only person that i know could think of was kind of smart with it and she I don't know. She just went on maternity leave, so she kind of did well, and she had like heaps of holiday pay saved up, mm. and so she was like, "I've been here long enough. I never want to be back." Mm. I don't yeah. think it's related. Okay. I think if you f- you you'll find amb- ambitious people, whether it's the opposite of people living in their comfort zone, thrill seeking or something, uh, who love gossip as well. And vice versa, I think you will find people who are living a comfortable life who don't gossip. So I don't think the gossip's correlated. I think no, it, no, two, two very different things. Yeah, yeah. And no, I didn't think, because I enjoyed the gossip. Yeah, right. I think humans in general enjoy yeah, yeah. gossip, even if we can recognize that it's not, you know, like healthy behavior. It's dirty buzz, as we have called it before. But it, we all seem dirty to enjoy buzz, it. yeah. Yeah. So I don't think it matters whether you're living a comfortable life or not. Yeah. Might uh, amplify it maybe because, yeah, it's like the highlight of their life in that case. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to also say that 
the opposite of comfort. What are we going to define as the opposite of comfort? Like discomfort. Discomfort. <laughs> yeah, discomfort. Know. Uncomfortable. So you can, like, yeah. discomfort or or like pain. Like it's a form of pain, discomfort, yes. I suppose. Challenge. Yes. Um, yeah. With status quo. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I mean, there's lots of metaphors that make sense where it's like you're going into the unknown. And that's why the com- comfort feels so good because you don't know what's going to happen. You might win or lose. Um, and I think it's intimately related to the lesson I've been trying to like consciously ram into my subconscious of like, you can't really lose because a lose is a, is a learn, you know? So like if it's a work, it could be related to anything and as cheesy as and low hanging self-help fruit as that is, uh, going out of your comfort zone and getting it thrown back in your face is a learn. You can retreat then to your comfort zone and try again. Yeah. Um, which is the obvious thing I think, but the hard thing to do in practice yeah and to add to that uh yeah it's a win because it well for starters you've done something so you've taken a risk and you can pat yourself on the back for having done something that most people would be scared to do and secondly it's a win because it's um it's going to desensitize you so that's going to make you more comfortable slightly more comfortable the next time you take a, a, a risk and it's just going to keep getting more and more comfortable and i'll use an example as, as stupid as it may sound to you guys but like for me go to the supermarket and ordering a coffee it's not something that i find comfortable mm. but then i just started doing it every day for well, the supermarket every day and last week i got coffee like three days three days of, of the week and just every time it gets more and more comfortable so that's like a, a, an example of that is the, the more you do it it just yeah De- it's like gamifying. I think we've talked about that before. Mm. Yeah, you could apply that in any facet of life. If your discomfort is going to the gym, well, everyone knows starting off is the hardest part, but it may not get physically easier as you add weights or whatever, but like it helps you build resilience and it helps you um, like adapt. And, and you start to realize like it's just it just becomes a normal thing in life like mm. um a part of your routine you just yeah i'm the same as david like i remember going um when it when i go out and just the thought of having to like find a car park or um just really dumb things like that yeah. would actually affect me getting stuff done yeah like oh i need i need to buy this i need to go to bunnings and pick up whatever for the house and then it's like oh no nah, i just you know traffic i just can't be you know, don't want to deal with it. Um, but then I kind of gamify it. You turn for me it was turning it into like a like a task or to do list, and then it just was like satisfying, ticking it off. Mm. So it becomes easier over time. I think. I think it also bleeds over into other areas of your life. Mm. So it's building a resilience, and then say something completely different happens. Uh, you know, you get really sick or. Um, you get into a car crash or something, something completely different happens, but some sort of catastrophe, you're more resilient and you'll be able to deal with that better than you otherwise would be. So, yeah, I think it bleeds over. Yeah, that's firsthand for me. I'm going through a, an annoying insurance claim and just like the run around because I haven't had to deal with it before. And as frustrating as it is, like it's, I know it's teaching me like, well, if this would have happened in the future, well, I could do it fine. Or, impart that wisdom or knowledge onto someone else who's going through the same thing i mean realistically you would have got into that point at some point yes. anyway yeah. I, yeah I feel like it would always be in your timeline that like i mean everybody's been in a car crash i mean or if not be careful yeah it's no. a matter of time i mean i never never was my fault never has been my fault <laughs> yeah but that's the thing you can't control so you kind of just I think that's the beauty, or beauty and chaos of, of the world, life, yeah, and the life, yeah. I don't know. Maybe something's just always around the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you? How do you? It's obviously a, a balance that we're talking about of the comfort versus discomfort. Toby, how do you uh, maybe know when you've got the balance right, or how do you know when you haven't got the balance right? Are there any like feelings that come up, or? I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of the time I just disassociate myself from everything around me and what, just what do you mean? Ch- like what? just check out and just bland, like take things in, but never actually acknowledge like like any of it. Like that- canceling plans and then just like 
<laughs> just random excuses that I just yeah. make for no apparent reason. It's like, is that when you haven't got the balance right? Yeah, when I mean? when like scales are tilted in the wrong. Like I'm making excuses just to not see my family. Mm. Like, and they're my family. What am I doing? Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. And I suppose it takes some self consciousness to realize that. Eh? But I always remind myself, like. Once you hit rock bottom, there's like nothing else. You got to always bounce back up. Yeah. So it's all a journey and progress of like finding yourself. And what I I always say to others, I'm like, you got to be really acquainted with the voice in your head because that's the only voice and like person you're going to have around forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, man. I agree. Uh, I wanted to say that I think. It's very. Uh, you said we said like it's the it's the fun thing about life, where it's kind of unpredictable, like with the insurance. But I think the comfort discomfort, um, you can go for quite a harsh saying and say like if you're not growing, you're dying. It's like a very ultimatum. It's probably overly simplified, but um, I think like like eating food because of our modern luxuries, it's forced us to have to. Like it takes a lot of mental energy to have to think about what food we're eating when you just didn't have a choice back in the day and you'd eat with the seasons naturally and it was much less processed. So I think in the same way with comfort and discomfort, like our modern way of living has given us so much comfort where for the first first time consistently you have to like actively be like, I should go for a run. Even though you don't have to run to chase down the gazelle, you can just sit and watch Netflix all day every day. Um and it's very draining catch the gazelle you're never gonna get well yeah well it's for uh, across every across many parts of of your life so food's one of them like modern like comfort you have to actively push yourself in ways that i don't think it's um very normal for our brains and when you live like the majority of people do i think the nine to five like grind you're like already mentally depleted anyway and so it's kind of you're kind of starting from a losing position i think so any tips and tricks for you guys to get yourself? You mentioned gamifying it. Any tips and tricks to like give yourself the mental energy or capacity to seek a healthy level of discomfort? Um, yeah, I think it's, it's a kind of it was like a statement Another slash rambler. question, but I think what I'm interpreting from what you're saying is like when you're um, just like stuck in the motion sort of thing and. and having that nine to five or um, routine life kind of just, yeah, make, makes you a bit mentally drained or easier to be susceptible to like those ruts that we talk about. I think one, like getting out in nature is probably healthy for you. Like um, and exercise is, is a huge one. Like it's always drummed into you. Like if you, even just going for like a walk outside, you could go for a walk on the treadmill if you want. Like, but um, just getting up and like moving, I think find useful for me. Yeah, because it's like if you are stuck, feeling sad or like depressed, you're more likely to um, find like solitude or just like you said, want you could just watch Netflix. You can stay in bed, um, but if you can at least force yourself outside i think looking up at the sky or looking at surroundings around just gives you like a new perspective hmm. simple as that that's why i'm enjoying the process of having a dog at the moment um is it as frustrating as it's been through the puppy stage just even being forced to actually go outside because it's beyond me like i i have responsibilities to look after this dog and keep him um active and, and healthy so like it's a it's taught more about myself as opposed to the dog if that makes sense yeah epic. so yeah just i think getting outside is a big one and, yeah. and exercises yeah it sounds almost too foremost. simple but i agree yeah wholeheartedly yeah yeah the pacing of nature i think is would make sense that it's put like we're evolved to be at the same pace as mm. nature so yeah it's it's gonna be yeah it's gonna feel like cohesive and joint which up. is also like another wonderful thing about living in new zealand you know you just it's surrounds you you just gotta look for it it's crazy how many 
like statistically how many New Zealanders there are that have n- never actually seen all of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. There's so <laughs> I'm many. I'm one of them. Like, I am one of worry, them. Don't worry, I'm the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah. North Island's uncharted for me, except for Auckland. Yeah, but everything else. Oh, I'm Wellington, but everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I think uh, in addition to in addition to the immediate r- result of seeking discomfort, so say like gym gym work that's a, a clear metaphor where like go through discomfort like painful muscles that means like growing if you're using them correctly um and you get it's kind of like the short-term long-term gain short-term loss long-term gain uh situation but i think it's really central just to life in general and it bleeds into everything like we've said like your gut bacteria requires a little bit of discomfort in the form of you need some germs that's why they say like for kids to go eat do it like yeah. when they're young Sanit- hand sanitizing everything's not good you need a little, your gut needs a little bit of discomfort everything needs a little bit of discomfort to grow um so i think yeah it'll bleed over into who someone said it was it would bleed bleeds over into many parts of your life um which i wholeheartedly agree so if if it doesn't seem worth it maybe oh, i have to go to the gym to and that sucks. It's like a pain in the ass. It'll mm. just like calibrate you across your whole your whole life, seeking that discomfort. It'll like spread it throughout your your soul, you know, across many yeah. things. I think because uh, we've talked about like, um, I guess, just normal living life and tasks like gym, etc. But one thing we should probably try and talk about is relationships because I think that that's a huge thing. We are in like the most loneliest time, even though we have access to talk to other people at our fingertips. Mm. And so I, I don't know if you guys are keen to touch on that topic a little bit. But mm-hmm. um, What do you have to say about relationships well, in terms of seeking discomfort? And- yeah, well, I, I think maybe we can all agree. Maybe not you, Toby, because you're just a awesome happy go lucky guy no i 100 percent agree <laughs> yeah like it's so the world's to... in the loneliest like yeah time even though you're so connected to others like it's really hard to like meet feel people it. and talk to people it seems if you meet someone new you generally hey what do you do for a living oh how's the weather going you know like it's so surface level but like would you have any um i guess tips or tricks about talking to people and like i guess yeah like Hmm. i don't know i think i think it takes a bit of faith and trust that other people are not like you're not as weird as you think you are i Hmm. think like everyone is pretty much the same and that they just want to like they all feel in the same thing um i found that recently with with a with a a venture of mine in the last couple of weeks just going around like it required me to go around local neighborhood and there's far more the rate of people who think very much alike to me on the important things on like the agreeing to disagree things and everyone's much less uh divisive than the internet would make it out to be so i think it, yeah i think it takes a bit of faith and trust and humanity really that um and you'll be rewarded for it in my opinion mm-hmm. in my experience rather not in my opinion if you go around the hood of new york being trusting that people are going to be nice it's probably not going to work out but for 99 percent of people who live in just like a regular middle city everyone's going to be pretty much the same and thinking the same that's my thing have some faith okay fair enough yeah like as great as it is and i, and I agree generally like with friendships and stuff you want to invest in the ones like the people who are closest to you but I mean, every now and again, like, well, if you, for someone who may not have, like, many friends, it's it's kind of like, oh, need to, like, put yourself out there. Because, like, as an example, when we went out, we went to this event during the week, and there was this guy sitting in front of us, kind of just, like, by himself. Um, and then you two just, like, hit it off. And I was like, how, like, how do you do that, you know? Like, I just, he was on the spectrum, it. so it was easy. It was okay. easy. Once I got, you got him started, he didn't shut up. So it was good, like a good thing. It was a fun interaction, but I mean that helped in that exact in that specific yeah. circumstance. But yeah, I know what you mean. Mm. Um, I don't know. It's 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 hard because you can't. I'm reminded of the Undateables, where they're trying to coach their like autistic children to how to be on a date, 
and as much as you could try you can't script it because it's like it's all contextual mm. i think so i don't think you can ever you can say ask questions about her like the girls like to be asked questions about her, and that's general for both sexes ask questions about other people but that's pretty broad and again it's going to be contextual you can't just be like go up to a stranger and ask them like, hey what flavor milk is your favorite milk it's gonna like it's not gonna feel right, right? <laughs> Chocolate. <laughs> yeah, maybe for you. I, I think it's easy. it makes me think about you th- um, like you'd start a new class or something at school, and the teachers would give you like an icebreaker uh, activity or something. Just uh, you're sh- you're nodding. Uh, sorry, shaking your head, but like some ways, I think that's kind of cool. Like oh, okay. It, yeah. it put like it puts you out there because it's. Most people, like, if you're going to an event or something, we're all in the same boat. Like, someone's just got to break up the ice. Otherwise, you're all just going to stand there with your hands in your pockets. Mm. Like, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you can, you can both be like, oh, this is cringe, but we're being told to. Like, we have to. Right, I like, see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So you can share in that moment. It feels, yeah. it feels like uh made me instantly think of... um my year 10 high school dances because oh, yeah. oh, I was the guy that was on the wall with his hands in his pocket. <laughs> I ain't talking to any girls. That's a very relatable discomfort moment that I'm sure yeah, you don't get many chances to to redo that. So, I mean, I was pretty much the same, yeah, like lost opportunities. If I was me now, I would have been so much more confident. I'm like, damn, <laughs> that's all part of the fun though, isn't it? Yeah, no, I agree. I was the same boat, year 10 dances. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. All right. Um, I wanted to. Oh, any, anything else to add about the human relationships seeking discomfort and comfort? Anyone? Before I move on. Um, not much. I think you just gotta have to you take take the leap. Yeah. I think. I don't agree that everyone is thinking the same way. Thinking thinking the same thing, but I think most people are more open to conversations than you think they are which is i think what you probably meant yes yeah yeah so i I would agree with that so you just kind of have to take take a chance and in all likelihood you'll be rewarded yeah it's not something that i'm good at but it's something that i'm getting better at yeah so yeah i I just agree with that yep um okay cool i wanted to say uh i feel i my it's my opinion that the internet scratches the uh, seeking discomfort itch like it feels like you're seeking discomfort going on the internet and i say that because uh it's kind of the unknown it feels like the unknown but now we all know like you can consciously know the algorithm's just giving me what i like anyway but it feels like you know you don't know what you're gonna get it could be could be good could be bad it's always gonna be good because of the algorithms but uh, i feel like it scratches that itch and you're not exercising that muscle on a on a deep level um so I think that's where a lot of the loneliness, obviously, the internet's not great for mental health in general. Um, but oh, it'll come back to me. <laughs> the You're internet, doing great, though. The internet is, yeah, scratches that, that fake, that the itch to seek discomfort, but it doesn't really. Oh, damn. What do you guys think about the internet and seeking discomfort then? Well, I remember the second half of that. No, that's fine. Uh, maybe I'll just share with the internet a general sense um i don't know what do i do when if i log into my laptop or computer generally first things you do would probably like check social media maybe check the news um but there's so much more out there so i, I don't know i think it's kind of cool well i don't know if you guys are but i my um thing of choice like consuming content is probably youtube more than anything and there's so like an well, I'd say infinite, but probably almost infinite amount of like things you could watch and read about. Like, um, I think one thing drummed into us, or maybe drummed into me growing up with my parents, was like what, needing to know what you had to, like what you needed to do um, at a young age. Like, you're 18, you should go to university, and had i known like more about youtube or whatever then like just the sheer amount of things i could overwhelm myself with oh that looks interesting maybe that's the thing i was like no i was kind of just stuck so i think if you use it to your advantage um 
like I, I kind of feel jealous to some of the young teenagers like growing up now just how much um opportunity there is out there mm-hmm. which i wish i had when i was a bit younger mm. almost overwhelming amount though isn't it yeah they can like be but analysis like paralysis but if you somehow. find if you but then also if you find like an interest if you're studying like if you have Khan academy like just you've got lecturers there like teaching you you don't almost don't even need to go to university to learn about something and unless you obviously might need the qualification but um so almost like infinite what's out there like i think i talked about this in an earlier podcast like one thing breaking down in my car it's like i could pay the mechanic or i could just like watch a video and learn to like do it myself Mm. like it's it's kind of cool like yeah you you, yeah you're you're seeking discomfort and um just by like learning new things every day i think it's pretty cool yeah it is it's just a very like low risk low reward i'd say internet like you can't really lose from going out venturing out in quotes into the unknown of the internet because the worst thing that happens is you waste like a minute of your time like it's pretty low stakes um which is a good thing about it but i remembered what i was going to say cool and that uh i like the metaphor of going uh seeking discomfort going into the unknown i like all these metaphors opening doors i think is a real good one and so for example with the human relation with people with relationships with other people it's you could meet someone that that changes your life you know like people say it's like who you know not what you know um and that has proven itself to be pretty true in in my experience so the internet kind of you can open as lots of doors it's not high risk not high risk low low risk of of being that thrown back in your face if you know what i mean um but the real positive about real discomfort in real life is that it opens it opens doors i'm all, i'm all over the place today i don't <laughs> I know what, what i'm taking a bit. <laughs> no, I, I get i get what you mean in terms of you never actually know what's going to happen unless you actually do it and, yes. and and as bad as an example it is for me, but like night on the town, your friends are about to go home and be like, nah, I might as well just like have a drink, sit in the smoko and see who's who's in the smoko. Because there's so many characters that you can meet in the smoko from yes. like different walks of life from around the world. It's, it's crazy the people and adventures they like nighttime walk around like the whole city with like eight different people from all around the world and you're like this is fun yes yeah you're like rolling the dice i feel like the internet just doesn't quite hit that hard when it's with real people you're rolling the dice way more you don't know what could what's going to happen like you're going into the unknown could be bad could be good but yeah it, could, it can change your life yeah and when it's in the real world the stakes are higher i think in terms of the reward you can get instead of being like oh it's a cool fact or like this is a cool cool thing i didn't know about on the internet someone could introduce you to oh you're into this i know a friend that's blah 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 um so yeah that goes back to the human relationships i suppose and just having having some faith rolling the dice a bit more internet's easy but real life don't know if anything quite beats so, it difficult. Yet. so difficult so difficult yeah way more difficult than the internet i, I wish you kind of got like a little like book that just taught you how to do like you know yeah. change a tire and yeah, like all yeah, the actual the and when you like how to buy a house deposit and like put yeah, a house man. deposit down well it also and doing real life stuff like that also makes you more resilient because like we said before the fun of life is that you don't know what's going to happen so when life throws something at you like a f- bad tire if you didn't already know someone in real life is going to come come by and help you out um yeah yeah no i i agree like even the smallest of things it's it sucks but it's like it it really helps yeah build that resilience muscle um i had a thought but i've completely lost it (laughs) it's that kind of vibe (laughs) yeah it's that so there's something in the air here yeah um is is the reason is the sole reason fear do you think for not seeking discomfort is it fear or is it Yes. I'd say fear. Yeah. For me. It boils down to fear. Do you agree? I don't know. I think so. You get like the butterflies in your tummy. You never Mm. know what. I don't know. Mm. Like the experiment you've mentioned with the mouse 
pulling harder on its tail when there's a cat smell behind it and cheese in front of it rather than just cheese in front of it. The, mm. There's kind of the comfort of the pleasure of comfort at one end, and that's that's all good and well. Like sure, Netflix feels good, but the watching fear, Rick and Mortar. Yeah. But combine that with also the fear of being eaten. Maybe it's not quite the best yeah, analogy, maybe but it, hot, yeah, yeah, the fear holds you back. It's like an opposite of a cat at the other end for the yeah. mouse. It's something that also, yeah. Yeah, holds the mouse back, but it is fear ultimately, isn't it? Yeah, fear like fear of unknown. I guess mm. it's a yeah. I think I'd probably boil it down to that. Um, and it's could be the same with anything. Like yeah, if you're living, if you're living a comfortable day in day out life, like that's that's great in some regards, but also like you you kind of just need something to push you otherwise what are you do like what are you doing it for like what's the purpose of mm. this what is the purpose of life if you're just doing the same thing day in day out till you die like, you just need challenges i mm. think um i think it's partly why i'm so so all over the place today because the comfort discomfort i think it's so inherent to life like my brain just spins off in all kinds of directions with the implications of of what we're saying with like I like, I quite like that if you're not growing, then you're already dead. Uh, mantra, maybe you'd call it. Um, well, although very simplified, um, spurs me on. I know which side I'd rather be on. You know. Mm. 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 <laughs> That's a nice contemplation. I don't know. The unknown is very. I I feel like this is quite a hard question. It, it is like a hard we, question. like again, it's, it's I'll put on paper. It looks really like it easy seems to word simplified, out. but it's not. Yeah. Like it's actually there's there's so much nuance to, I guess, the discomfort because it it can be broad. Like it could be very broad, or it could be honed down on one specific thing. Yes, like it's all relative to your own experience of what you're going through. But then the joy as well of knowing that like there will be others that share the same um experiences or challenges like that you can lean on but it's just not the same unless you experience it yourself Mm. i don't know if this is a good example but like traveling the fact that you could go on google earth or google maps and look up almost any place in the world it's yeah like it's awesome it's good as a learning tool but like no one wants to everyone wants to experience like the eiffel tower in person you know not everyone but it's just not the same unless you you do it in person so uh, yeah i think maybe (laughs) maybe looking at yourself in like the lens of like a game character that you're just controlling yourself so uh, yeah i'm gonna go walk down to the dairy today i haven't had a drink like a energy drink in a while like cool switch it up a little bit oh yeah well you just gotta throw yourself a few Mm, things you're a fan of the gamifying of it i don't know it's i think not say it's an easy way to go through life because it's not and it's not the only way but um yeah i just i find it useful to me Hmm. like if i if i'm i started using a calendar to like plan life because you wouldn't I got terrible memory and you're just, Oh, what have I got on? What have I got today? Just being able to like throw all these things, structure it. You can put colors on each thing you do. Like if I'm doing the podcast, it's an orange, you know, Mm. it's like, cool. I've got something orange. And do you feel more compelled? Like past nav can set up future nav by planning a discomfort event. And and because it's on a list, you feel more compelled to do it. Yeah, kind of. And like, don't get me wrong. I don't, necessarily always do it just because it's the like i'll go through those days where i just can't be bothered or you know i forget to do this or need to do household chores and you put it like yeah sure for sure but in a way yeah like setting yourself up or knowing that you've got things to look forward to like helps you get through like the mundane the mundaneness of life um and yeah like I think it's also how uh, I would say healthy, like if you portion things out, um, you know, like if I guess if you lay, it's hard to articulate because you guys don't do it, but if you like, if I laid my week calendar out and I'd say like, okay, there's a fair amount of 
this color a fair amount of yellow is for like exercising blues for like seeing family or think just yeah to put it that way like you can kind of juggle life as like okay maybe i've been lacking in some of these areas i need to put more emphasis on these areas Mm. but on the other end of the spectrum that does make me feel sometimes too comfortable about life like knowing okay cool this is how it's going to be and for me having um like change it really throws me out so if i know i've got like an event on like with my wife and family and i know like it's canceled we're doing on another night it's like oh my gosh like that's just it just throws me off Mm. so that two structure yeah like i can't i'm not a huge like adaptable person that's just who i am like I, i struggle to adapt and generally don't um Oh, what's the word when you'd wanting to spontaneous like i'm not a spontaneous person but then every now and again like i kind of need it mm. so like Spon- even, yeah leaving like a little bit gap open for like oh yeah whatever yeah this could be you know when was the last time you did something spontaneous i mean yeah, i could see like today to be fair um i had to go like to a hospital appointment and we decided to go for a like drive into the city and then find a new cafe like so yeah it's some it can be small you don't have to mm-hmm. go like climb a new mountain or something but just no. i think spontaneity is is kind of discomfort yeah, isn't it, it is it? It's, yeah. it's, it, by definition it does, you don't know what it is what's going to happen mm. until you're doing it but um, it's like cooking like i mean i could eat the same foods as much as I enjoy them, you know, like pizza or steak or whatever. But how cool is it sometimes to just experience something new and be like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. You could, uh, that's actually a cool hack I've never thought of. Might be a a life hack is is planning spontaneity, planning a little bit of time to be like, I am not going to decide until then, but I'm going to do something. I'm going to go somewhere or do something. That's discomfort, especially if you're someone like yourself who likes plan, planning things, you could plan in, unplanned yeah, yeah i, I, I kind of get yeah what you're saying yeah um i also wanted to ask um everyone i know everyone everyone in the world will self-medicate against discomfort somehow like they all we all have something that's like ah oh, relax whether it's netflix or drugs or i don't know maybe you, you self-medicate in an annoyingly healthy way and go for a run or exercise or something one of those people Gross. Um, <laughs> what what are you any thoughts on self-medicating against discomfort so i'm thinking about drugs like explicit drugs yeah do you guys have have thoughts about that do you have anything to say in terms of probably mental discomfort like oh i just want to like just want to stop the chatter like and then self-medicate with something um how yeah i don't i don't have an exact specific question about it but i mean i can say for myself i use not a big drinker, but occasionally I would smoke to for that for that reason um, to 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 do that unwinding um, and get away from the discomfort of kind of that nagging maybe meaninglessness. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's like a. Mm. Uh, what do you think? Maybe, I I, I'd yeah. say you can be positive in small doses in in regards to like if you're having like a smoke, like reducing it to like a single day of the week. Because otherwise, like, don't get me wrong, like, weed is addictive, like, by all means, and they say it's not, but you fall into, like, this routine where you almost can't function without it. Like, you go, well, I'm just going to have a cheeky bit extra before I go to work or, like, before I go and see my family. Like, it just becomes more on your subconscious than anything else was. It's like, oh, when am I going to, when am I going to have my next smoke or, like, when am I going to i don't know get home and like hang off the guys or something like that Mm. yeah yeah it makes sense do you any thoughts david yeah i think as long i I have a fairly liberal view of it so because i do it myself i don't smoke weed but other, other drugs and stuff like that um but if it's adding value to your life like you're not doing that to escape your your discomfort in terms of you're doing that and then you're going to play video games on netflix if you're doing that on top of 
you've already been out uh, in my case i've gone out and i've been to chemist warehouse and i've bought myself a coffee and i've been to the supermarket i've already done the things that i find discomfort of uh, for the day and then I go home and indulge in whatever drug of choice I think that's okay as long as you feel okay about it but if you if I took the drug at the start of the day and then said oh I'm not going to go to do all those things I'm just going to watch Netflix that's when it becomes a problem in my opinion but if you're yeah. still growing and you can incorporate it into your life whether it be uh, limited or every day I think it's okay as that's a fairly liberal view but yeah that's my, my, my view of it mm. lovely view yeah, it's interesting. I think if you're particularly talking about um, drug, I mean, yeah, drugs. But if you say like you're going to the gym and or you're getting the things you need to get done and using it as like a reward, yeah, I don't have an issue of people doing that. But sometimes you 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 self justify things more than you probably should. Yeah, would be like, okay, I've gone to the gym, so therefore now I can go get eat a big mac or something like if you know it's bad like you shouldn't be doing it so if you if you can just sure i'm doing it because i i want i've done everything i need to do i just need to chill out okay fine but then if you start using it as a coping thing um where it's like no i, I have to do all these things so i can therefore smoke or whatever yes. like i think that's when it draws you draw the line maybe yeah I yeah i mean i'd say it depends on the yeah. person but i think of it i'll use cannabis as an example even because it's very common even though I, this is not my case of cannabis but treat it if it is like if, it, if it's like a prescription drug if cannabis is an anti-anxiety or an antidepressant for you so you have to smoke it every day but you're doing that and then that's helping you go out and socialize or do the things that you're anxious or depressed about i think that's okay so that's a very liberal view, but that would be the same as an antidepressant. You have to take it every day. But if that now enables you to overcome the things that you are that you couldn't bring yourself to otherwise do, it might not be the perfect case in an ideal world. You don't need any substance or drug, whatever, to do that. But if you can't and the drug enables you to do that, I personally don't have an issue with that. Mm. Um, as I say, my issue, and not for others, but for myself, I would feel bad if I was using whatever drug and then I was using that to escape the things I was scared about. But yeah, if I was, yeah, about, yeah, that I would not feel good about. And I've done that in the past. Then I wouldn't feel good about myself. But if I'm taking the drug and then I'm still overcoming and growing, essentially, I'm I'm okay with that personally. But even well spoken, yeah, you're most fluent out of all of us yeah, today by far. Very well <laughs> spoken. <laughs> barely said that a word, but what he said is just uh, um on the money. I don't want to give off the impression that I think that that comfort is something to be uh like ashamed about or like binging netflix you know um and also with the internet i might have come across like like bagging it but and from my experience uh the internet obviously provides a wealth of information like as a big you can have as much mental load as you want like learning learning things i know most of it isn't sinking in but i'm a lot a lot of podcasts and information pouring in and oftentimes the comfort and just relaxation and i choose to relax with cannabis sometimes is a form of like integration of that like i need just a rest to like for it to like soak in and settle in i think that is a lot more uh mm. real and phys a physical thing on the mean like mentally yeah. then we give it credit yeah we're yeah, almost, we're uh, almost like a clairvoyance almost yeah yeah you just need time like a meditation to just like absorb subconsciously what you've been exposed to for however long you want. Yeah. and i think you can feel that you find a feel a bit like with the nine to five you feel like exhausted and i, I feel like uh with a nine to five most people it's just tilts into progressively less mental energy like you can't you can't replenish it fast enough you got two days in the weekend and you got to cram in all your social stuff into there as well give or take more or less it's very, very simplified you can do it on the weekend but i'm um, on the weekdays but yeah i think it's just most people are like constantly a little bit fried and just can't quite recoup. And mm. so I feel like a lot of the times drugs or whatever people are self-medicating with technology with Netflix can yeah. be like a potent form of like of relaxation where you, you're like not thinking about anything else. You're like just absorbed with that and then your subconscious can deal with everything else that's happened over the week. Yep. That's how I see it anyway. For me, probably like just watching a movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I used to... I used to go every week, like to the to the movie, like theater, cinema, to watch a movie. 
when I was in high school. It was just the thing I enjoyed doing. Now I'd be lucky to go like once every two, three months, depending what depending what comes out. Like if yeah. Um but yeah, like sometimes for me it's just I need something just life's catching up on you. Yeah, so it feels just like just need to like debrief or de I don't know, say de stress. I know what you mean. But yeah, like if it's the same movie that you watch all the time, like a feel good movie, I don't know, I've seen School of Rock probably like it's forty or fifty movie. times, That's you know. An awesome movie. And it's just like you just chuck it on. You don't even have to necessarily be fully watching it, but like just knowing that it's there and the, it's like that comfort you you associate it with comfort. Yes. I guess. Yeah, I think it comes for me. It comes back to having to, unfortunately. It, Unfortunately or fortunately, you have to consciously be managing that stuff these days. We're, back in the day, you didn't have a choice for discomfort. Like You just lived a discomfort, uh, uncomfortable life, and you didn't have a choice. You could relax briefly in the summertime when all the crops were harvested and whatnot. But mm. nowadays, I think it's yeah, it takes a lot of mental energy, and that's where people struggle, I think. like Mentally, obviously, you see it these days with the mental health epidemics and meaninglessness feelings of meaninglessness i think it's a mental drain now and we're taking the l mentally and um you have to consciously yeah manage your comfort and discomfort in terms of like integrating and then being powered with information and social events and blah 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 and then using substances if you need it or meditating or some kind of practice to efficiently integrate all that and then do it all again the next week and it's just very full-on so uh, and manage, learning to manage that is the is the key to probably living in 2023 as an adult. Right. That's what we're all struggling with, I think. So would you say then it's design. like a thing you should probably like do a w- like weekly, like evaluate, just take time out? I think so. I think because our society is structured in like a weekly basis where things happen. Mm. You know, you work Monday to Friday and then Saturday, Sunday off typically. <laughs> And then rinse and repeat on a weekly basis. So, yeah, it makes sense, I guess, then to incorporate some weekly practice, whether that be for a lot of, for a lot of people, I think it'd be a spiritual de- detox or the spirituality side of things is quite neglected, I think, these days. So, again, I think that bleeds over into everything else. You can feel, I, I imagine a lot of people who go to church will say it recharges them. It feels recharging, like on a spiritual sense that not much, not many other things do. Um, and so I think that also is super integrated or bleed over into many things in your life. If you're topping up your spiritual cup is mental, spiritual and physical, in my opinion. So if you're topping up one, it's going to bleed into the other. If you're working out, it's going to help your mental health. We know mm-hmm. that it bleed, they all bleed across each other. I think. <laughs> hey, fair enough. Yeah. I, I would probably agree with you. Yeah. The like, working out one's a great example, isn't it? Because yeah, Everyone knows that it, it hurts, but you get mental benefits as well as physical benefits. Yeah. And so I think the three, I don't think you can never prove the really spirituality one with science anyway, but it's my belief that there's those three and they all bleed into each other. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you could almost argue like yoga would be considered spiritual, although and it's physical. Physical. It's both, yeah. So like, and that would be the one that taps into, the, well, probably mentally too, but um, yeah. Yeah, no, I I probably agree with you. I think um, sometimes it's easier to you might you might be going through a real uh, good run and like not physical run, but like a run in life where things are going well, and but then you might be lacking another like spiritually or you, whether you're not you agree with that. So yeah, like spending time in another area or mentally like doing something challenging or um yeah helping you overcome will definitely make you feel physically better mm. uh, they all kind of yeah wire into each other i, I would mm. agree yeah 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 i think you can do spirituality without religion you could do it with family like or just good friends like good friends that recharge you rather than drain you mm. and we all know well, i think we all know intuitively what that means we have examples of friends that drain and friends that um so that what's the opposite of that top you up yeah spiritually you feel good and then yeah it does make you feel good it's a drug in itself arguably the best one it's nice, it's good nice friends, to catch up with best you guys in the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no fair enough anything else to add yeah uh just 
yeah, I think you're generally right. Um, but that's just like another example of where we haven't been educated on how to manage our lives, essentially. There's no user manual. No one taught us that you should... I'll break it down, make it real simple. Yeah, I think life should be about deep work and deep rest. So yeah, you should have a period of deep work, where you, you know, deeply focused in and and ingrained in it, and then you have a completely shut off. But yeah, no one really teaches you that. You have to figure it out. And I think I think all of us probably are figuring, starting to figure out, which is good because I don't think most people ever figure it out or even get close to figuring it out. It's really something that, yeah we should be sort of educated about, but. We weren't. We weren't. No. Well, I just, yeah, like in saying that, I, I agree, like you do need deep work and deep rest, whether or not you'd look at it from like a religious point, but um, I guess in the Bible, like if, if it says God worked for the six days and on the seventh day he rested, like, yeah, I guess there's merit to that. And you could probably find that in multiple um, religions or just I guess everyday life though but mm. um, even if you don't agree I think you can find wisdom and knowledge through religion that can be applied to life whether you're a believer or not yeah Bible's well, so, a big self-help book really well yeah um, you mentioned deep deep work and deep learning I wonder if deep and rest. that's deep sorry deep rest that's and it's um one way to but do it but deep I th- learning as well yeah, yeah. Well, can you do it also just start to maybe decrease both extremes and just do little work and little and then little rest i think that's kind of what in my personal like i long for the simple life whether i regret that or not but i think yeah in my opinion i'd like to do little work and little rest and just keep those swings the back and forward less um but this the world we live in is so competitive i think you have to deep work uh, uh, Sorry, I just was saying, yeah, I think it. that if you're doing little work, that means, and you say little rest, I would think that yeah. would tip the pendulum, it would be little work, too much rest. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah I see. Like, the, yeah, more, right, the, right, little, right. the little work you do, the less, like, the more rested you'd be. That's a fair point, because like, so, what else are you doing with your time yeah, if you're not so like, what, working or resting? would you do you i mean i don't know for you but yeah i see good point i would have the opposite take of that because i think that's what most people do already they go and work a crappy office job where they Uh, jack off all day sit on facebook for half the day do hardly anything productive and then they go home and they do little rest they don't really truly rest they're on their phone and i'm don't i'm not preaching here i do the same thing but you're on your phone you're blasting on social media you're doing 10 things at once on home you're not truly resting so i'd argue that that's what people are already doing most people do stuff all all day myself included i can spend half the day on facebook as well but that's it we're not really doing deep work where we have our phone off and yeah. we're you know laser focus we're just yeah doing little bit little bits of, of work and then we go home we don't truly rest so i think yeah. that's what we currently do i think what you mean is different a different form of that but yeah yeah no i i, I think i've i changed my mind straight away you okay guys, well because i don't know if there's anything else other than the binary if you're not working and you're not resting i don't know if there's a third option so it's not it's not deep work deep rest it's just mate, yeah. it's just li- yeah little work would still be deep rest because you'd you're doing a little it'd be even more rest is what you're saying, is what I, you saying. I think it kind of it's a small well, seasonal thing like there's no nothing wrong with having a period of i don't know working six months straight of hard work and then taking two weeks off to go on a holiday and having deep rest where you're doing nothing like just to level them out again because yeah like that sort of thing probably helps you um reevaluate and then when you go back into it okay you might look at it differently yeah i think i think what what i had in mind originally when i said that would be to try and to kind of blend the two so i think when people talk about doing working their passions it sounds like it's also somehow restful for them they're yes. like at peace yeah so that's, and that's what i'm what saying I mean. by deep work and we've all had this moment where we're doing whether it's work at, at, at our job or just a project that we're working on as a hobby or whatever we are 100 percent engaged in it and it's really mm-hmm. good you're not it's it's like a form of meditation. Yeah. Video games can be the same. We're just hundred yeah. percent laser focused. You're not thinking about paying the bills. You're not thinking about yeah. the little fight yeah. you had at work. You're just 
hundred percent laser focused and it is it's form I, I would call it meditation rather than rest even though you could argue that meditation is restful mm. but you can't do that all the time it's still you still need to decompress even though in that state you're not feeling like it's tiring you it's just not sustainable you still then have to have a complete shut off or at least some form of shut off. I think an ideal world. Yeah, you, you swing between that and a deep and then yeah, a complete shut off rather than a half shut off where you're in bed, but yeah, you're on Facebook and you're on Snapchat no. and TikTok and you're watching a movie at the same time. It's not really rest, it's kind of rest, it's half rest. Uh and, and also I'll just add that this is on a a daily a daily thing and also a weekly amount and a yearly thing so this should how it should be on a daily we should try and do a period of deep work for an hour or two and have an hour or two or longer of deep breaths whenever and then maybe once a week you have you you, you go to the hot pools get a massage a, whatever a pedicure manicure uh, and then on a monthly or a yearly basis yeah you go away for a weekend or a, or a couple of weeks on so, a tramp or something yeah yeah so so this is yeah it, it needs to be managed on a daily a weekly a monthly and a yearly on a yearly scale well okay. i'll see it again i think I'm, david's on yeah. point today I, yeah. I don't know if this is like an example that fits that but um in terms of like when i edit the podcast to put it out having that deep focus where i just like nothing's going on i don't care like just tell about my, my wife like i need an hour an hour and a half to two hours sit in the thing just get it all done and then it doesn't feel like i'm doing work yep. like it's like yes two hours has passed but i feel like accomplished after um yeah there, i mean there will be like a, a natural inclination to like try and procrastinate and put it off but like once you get it done it doesn't feel like work you yep. just done it yeah it's it's making me think that's the seeking discomfort not seeking discomfort but just discomfort in general has something to do with your passion like or like living in alignment as the hippie side would call it and so like seeking discomfort comes becomes way easier when you care about yes, it yes like, 100 percent. yeah if you want to yeah. be a bodybuilder going to the gym is going to feel awesome if it's you, going to be that 100 yeah, percent. if you like truly love it and it's if you look at arnold schwarzenegger rich piana uh ronnie coleman mm. they I, I could never be a bodybuilder because i don't truly love it you don't care enough no yeah. gym is just a means to an end because it is good for you but i don't love it those guys actually love it yeah. arnold schwarzenegger said that he was well, he said that like going to the gym is like coming for me yeah. because <laughs> it's like every it. time i lift the weights i feel wow. like i'm coming yeah well, it doesn't Imagine feel like that, that for me. Man. Oh, yeah. that'd be so great so those people they truly love it yeah. whereas i don't love it i don't it's it's yeah i feel good afterwards because you've done something but i could yeah, never be a full-blown bodybuilder because i don't truly love it but mm. it, you're 100 percent right whatever it is if you care about it even though it whatever it is will likely require hard work it'd be much more uh achievable if you care yeah. about it yeah i don't know how and i think like how many people will i know that love their job not like not many but then i think how many people in the past historically 100 200 300 yeah. years ago loved their job but, yeah. but i don't f i think they were more content somehow because it was just probably felt like more of a necessity yeah and I they think. didn't have a choice there's no choice about it with with the internet we're like overwhelmed by choice and it just feels like there's there's really apparent and tangible the feeling that there's something i should be doing that's better that's like got to be there's got to be something and then you go on the internet for side hustles and there's a million and you're like i don't really want that like yeah. and you're like surely there must be something i think that's kind of that nagging yeah. feeling that the internet is a double-edged sword for yeah yeah it is because yeah it's mm -hmm. um the the choice of uh the paradox of choice yeah there's too many choices but yeah, you you just got to figure it out. I still think that's a better alternative than there being like no choices. Yeah. You're forced to work in the coal mine. Yeah, yeah we just have to learn how to consciously yeah, manage it. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. And again, work. we yeah. should be being taught that. I know this is a very sort of new problem. Yeah. But um, and, and yeah, you can find advice like on the internet, but um, it should be integrated in schools and hopefully peer prospect again. If you're thinking about having kids, think about these things because they're gonna have this and it's going to be amplified by a hundred times of mm. the way 
the the world is going technology is going to be a hundred times the options there are today yeah 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 it's so. it's, it's, it's we're just got to deal with it i feel like culturally we're all kind of been figuring it out like the internet's changed the internet's definitely changed it's not just our algorithms but the style of yes. the internet's definitely changed over its inception and it's kind of felt like it's grown up as well like it's yeah entity. I th- I we're feel- all figuring out how to relate with it a bit better and healthier you're right and i feel like the internet sort of went from being sort of a playful yeah it was, it was not, all young people on it to yeah start and, with, and it? but it wasn't about like work or productivity or business opportunities it was about all this quirky thing and yeah, fun and jokes and like alter ego like yeah i can pretend to be like yeah my alter ego on here and it, yeah it's very much changed from that where it's now although you can find funny stuff in this it's much more serious overall and it's more about generally being used to be connected and implement within our real lives you know um if, if you um if you think like work you'll get messages on your phone about work and and, and yeah yeah it's it's been integrated to to be like a productivity tool more mm. so than this quirky little fun uh almost like it used to be like a uh, what a playstation maybe is today a form of that where it's purely entertainment it's a little bit of fun um but yeah it's certainly changed for the most part yeah, yeah i think maybe as well because it's more of a social tool growing up like now you have yeah social media like your facebook accounts your youtube accounts you can remain like anonymous on some things but for the most part like you are still putting yourself out there so like say up um your facebook account um you, you know your friends like people still generally will like post what they they're getting up to you wouldn't think that's like it's still a highlight you know like you're still seeing the highlight reels but if i guess if it was like a free-for-all internet where you can kind of just get away with it i think it would look completely different but the fact that it's yes yeah, well, that's like 4chan yeah 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 to- <laughs> totally like <laughs> it's completely anonymous and it's yeah. degenerate it's so but degenerate. like what you know most people have had have a social footprint is that yeah. what they call it where yeah. like you're out there anyway so now you're kind of like mature and you're toning it down you still have funny things and dumb things you watch and whatnot but like i guess you're more reluctant to like be your true self yeah that sort of stuff is limited and reserved for like your close friends yeah you're just hanging out the most obvious example (laughs) is that is of all the girls who used to post half naked pictures on either facebook instagram and now all those pictures have been deleted (laughs) and they don't post them anymore (laughs) that's the most stark contrast of growing up that was kind of they're comfortable when they're 18 20 16 whatever it was to post like a half naked photo of themselves probably on instagram more so than facebook but yeah that doesn't happen well, for ninety nine point nine percent of females now at our age, at yeah, a- approaching thirty, they do not. Which is a good pictures. thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> probably think. is. Yes. Um, maybe just to start wrapping up, I wanted to ask you, Toby. You mentioned um a while ago in person that um you had sometimes related more to females than males, and I related to it, and it's just something that's that stuck. I'd never really heard anyone else kind of mention it. I was like, oh yeah, that that was kind of me growing up as well um and and maybe relating that to comfort and whatnot what do you have to say on that yeah don't don't get me wrong guys <laughs> you're all great yeah yeah <laughs> but um i don't know i think it kind of falls for for me personally like a stigma of like new zealand true male man is playing rugby sinking piss with the boys all that kind of jazz and i was like the shy like kept to myself kind of kid i didn't go out to like parties or have like that kind of rebellious well i like rebelled in but in like my own manner of things and didn't like sneak off to house parties and such and so i I feel that as though from like never actually experiencing those little wee like connections of like just playing a sport um i just don't get along at all but where when it comes to like for girls not trying to sleep with them like but just they also got some good gossip Mm. they got some good gossip but i think it's kind of nice it's a completely different outlook in terms of like how they see the world and i don't know they always have a bit broader thoughts than 
I don't know, a lot of degenerate minds. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I, yeah. I think uh, it'd be safe to say that mainstream culture, whatever that may mean in whatever country you're in, whatever, for whatever gender you are, is is comfort. Like it's easy, it's real way easier to be to be what is what you the caricature of a guy in New Zealand to take, for example, the like the sinking piss and whatnot. And if you, I think that'd be motivation. If you don't, if, you, if that's not attractive to you, if normal mainstream expectations are not attractive to you, then like we we're saying before, it all bleeds into other aspects of your life. If you're just being comfortable yourself, you're going to be going with the flow, and you're just going to be pulled into the mainstream no matter what. You know, if you're just living a life of comfort and you don't want a nine to five, that's what you're going to get. I think if you, if you don't, yeah, if you if you're constantly being comfortable in and, and living in the mainstream, you're not going to get out of it, basically. You're going to have to change first. Otherwise, you'll get, that's what you're going to end up like. The yeah. pull is going to be towards that. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I feel like I know what you mean. It's almost um, you attract what you want to attract, but, like, subconsciously you don't realize it. Yes. And so yeah. you, you bring on the things into your world that you inherently, like, think about yeah. more often than not. And so... If you, you kind of like cut that out, it's just yeah, never yeah. a process that it's, you go through. Does the word, uh, the word integration comes back to mind, like integrating your, your subconscious and your conscious. I know a lot of people who complain about like the very first story about the, the forever woman at, at the retail store. She complained a lot about her life and her work. And, right. but, but subconsciously, she's yeah. obviously fine with the comfort. She's obviously right. fine. Just yeah. like, it's not a mu- that much of a driver that's making her change. She's, She's maybe succumbing might be the right word to the to the comfort more than sh- she would consciously like or subconsciously. Yeah, yeah. That, you know that, what I mean? And I think like complaining is not going to like generate results. It's going to generate more rubbish. Yes. So if you're constantly thinking that everything is shit and complaining, it's just going to generate more shit. Hmm. And have you ever seen these people in life? I, I know one that sort of used to be a family friend and actually I, I know one who is technically family that just came out of the woodwork a few a year or two ago and everything just seems to go wrong all the time <laughs> in their life. Yes, but they then, attract it. It's yes, like a weird yeah, metaphysical yeah. thing. If, You're like, if you that's look more at their behaviours and the way they talk and act, it's like they're, they're generating it. If you act and, ha- and the people you hang around, like if you hang around nasty people like nasty things are going to happen it's because okay, so if you um if you hang, hang out with, smoke yeah. yeah it's likely you're going to find fire or get burnt whatever it is yeah so yeah you do have to be careful um with your subconscious but i also just want to add i completely relate to that that thing about females and i think it's i i had that experience to an extent even though i did like rugby and stuff i've always found females more approachable i i think yeah i find males threatening and yeah yeah actually. and it, it, it's almost super difficult to like one a cliche like man like never show your emotion like and all that kind of thing it's you feel it's so hard to actually break yourself down and like find yourself mm. with, like without yep. feeling as though like why are you a little pussy? Yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. Of thing. yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. It, it comes from a place of surely of discomfort from them, like they're uncomfortable with like the feelings side of things, so they are retreating back into the comfort of right, of, like yeah. just call it, just dismissing it as yeah, pussy. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, which is their own bet. Like everyone has their own battles, right? Yeah. But even to this day, like uh, if I'm going to some sort of appointment. Uh, especially if it's like a place I haven't been to before, I'm always hoping that I'll be like served by a female rather than a male because I just mm. find females so much less daunting. So like if I can't, or well, the, the best example is that was when I went to a psychiatrist and I was like, I really hope I get a female psychiatrist because I'll just feel so much more comfortable. And yes. I did and I was like, so stoked. So that's an example. Whereas I'm sure a male psychiatrist would have been fine, but mm. at first I would have been like, ah, like, yeah, just there's some sort of weird vibe I get where, yeah, I don't, feel completely comfortable with males but females and it's it's natural isn't it like yes. um it's why it, like waitresses are f- mostly female that's I a say, good point yeah it's like yeah, comforting yeah yeah that and it, unless you go to hooters <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's comforting and, in a different way um if you like look at the way little children they gravitate towards females not males because yeah, yeah. they they um view they know and it's an instinct the motherly instinct that they're much less of a threat so yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yep, I agree. I just yeah, I can completely relate to what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I'd never heard anyone like no. say it so explicitly. No. I was like, oh yeah, I did. I do kind of feel relate yep. to that, mm. um, or I did at least like, growing up. Like his yeah, I was like definitely a little Weasley kid, not a rugby kid. Up. So yeah, yeah. Or like, less so now. Even even so, like just like the one guy friend, like just one. Mm. It's always mm. just mm. The heaps yeah. of random other friends. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's an interesting point. I'm thinking about yeah, like intermediate where. There's clear, maybe kids are still trying to figure themselves out, which was understandable, right? So you just go to whatever's more comfortable and the more f- feminine kids, myself would have been included. Like the the boys had maybe slightly more femininity in them than the other guys. Yeah, just the generally. chubby fat in me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah great. Yeah, so that's interesting to think about. Any final thoughts then, eh? Shall we? On comfort and seeking discomfort. <laughs> Picked mm. up in the second half there. Yes. I was all over the show for the first bit and <laughs> we recouped. We yeah. recouped. No, I we did well. Look, I think as comfortable as life can be and how good that can be in that comfort, because you know, everything's going the way you want it to be, like I think you actively do still need to look for discomfort in life. Whether that's just trying something new every now and again you know it's like trying new foods you know you you just gotta have some sort of challenge or change up switch it up and that's the joy of life okay epic isn't life beautiful okay i'll go next uh i think it's like you the term dirty buzz short-term gain for long-term loss if you're seeking comfort too often you're stealing from your future i think and uh yeah yeah that's basically all i have to say it feels like you're stealing from your future the, the long-term gain is much a, a longer lasting b- buzz it yeah. feels better than mm. like a netflix show like you know everyone can relate now to the tiktok and feeling like immediately disappointed in themselves when an hour has gone by like you've just had a massive dirty buzz and your brain's kind of fried yeah. and you're not happy yeah. where everyone knows it's the execution that's the hard bit that going to the working out or just being outside and sitting and quietly is going to be more uncomfortable might be cold outside or whatnot but after that hour you're going to feel way better like if you cut time at that hour and that's obvious that's not anything new right everyone knows that but it's important to remember myself yeah i would say that if you are truly comfortable being comfortable don't change so within reason like if you've got a job and you enjoy it it's not that challenging, but you enjoy it and you enjoy just coming home, reading a book, watching a movie, then don't change because then you'll feel like crap. You'll, but yeah, you'll know if you're, if when you're like watching too much Netflix, it's the classic easy example, whatever it is that you're doing for comfort, but you have this desire inside you that, like a guilt. If you feel guilty about that, then you need to listen to it. It's a very subtle hint. You can easily ignore it, but it will just sort of eat away at you. So if you've got that clue, that guilty feeling within you, then you probably should reevaluate and seek discomfort. But yeah, if you don't have that and you're just truly comfortable and comfortable, don't change because yeah, there's no need to. But yeah, it's cool. I like that. I, re- I really liked what you said with um, stealing from your future. It's, I don't know. There's no other kind of better way to put it. Like mm. there's, if you don't kind of start now, like you're never going to start at all. It's like there's no point dwelling in like the past. The future's is always going to be ahead. But what are you gonna do to get to like the future? I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, I, I would I mean maybe not the best example, but it's kind of like saving for a house deposit. Like you're living in periods of discomfort, but that's building you up for like being able to do something. Yeah. Saving in yeah, general yeah, and saving yeah. for any amount is is it's, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You're not getting to, but it provides comfort. Like the re- the reward is at the end. Yeah, Delayed yeah. gratification, almost. Yep. But anyway, that's another topic. Um, Sweetest type of gratification. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think we'll wrap it up. Wrap it up there for the night. Cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Another council in I the need, bag. I need sleep. Obviously, <laughs> I haven't eaten all day. I just realized. By the way, I had an apple. 
today. Just an apple. Just an apple. Don't, so that's, yeah. that's, that could explain it. Don't know how you do it, eh? <laughs> no, Neither. fair enough. Um, well, thanks, Toby, for joining yeah. us. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank We've you. enjoyed yeah, to hear what you've had to say. Yeah, and, yeah, I sat um, in the corner for like a little bit. For um, You guys were spitting some great things. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just wonderful to listen to for cool. like a bit. And I completely forgot. I'm like, I can input. In <laughs> yeah. Well, I was cool, like, it was huh? great. No, thank no, you for inviting it, me. No, good I think stuff you got the balance right. Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, that's us for another week. Episode 41 complete. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find us on social media, the Friday Council. And um, we are on YouTube, Spotify primarily. But thanks for listening and we will see you all next time. Peace. 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 Peace.